This is Living Power with Dan Hurst. Now, I've always been fascinated by the phenomena, uh, phen- I can't even say the word, phenomena, thank you. No, 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 no. All right, uh, I've always been fascinated by uh, what I call the, this phenomena of people who wear crosses. Um, now, if you're wearing a cross, that's fine. I'm not, I'm not criticizing you for that. Yes, I am. Uh, but I, I, but I'm, just, I'm always fascinated by why people wear crosses. You see them everywhere, and, pe- and a lot of people don't even have a clue what it's for. Now, I, I understand that you wear one because it represents your faith in, in Jesus Christ and the price, horrible price that he paid uh, on the cross for us. But a lot of people have no idea what, what the cross is all about. They don't, and they'll wear them, and they don't even know why. I, I had a guy one time, I'd met this guy, and I was at, he wore a cross all the time. And I said, oh, why do you wear a cross? And he says, well, I don't know. He says, it's kind of like a religious thing. And I said, oh, are you, are you religious? And they said, no, I, I just think it's cool. That was his reason for wearing it. He thought it was cool to wear a cross. The reason the cross 2,000 years ago was, was, wasn't worn by people as a fashion statement or made out of a piece of 14-karat gold or put on the top of a building was because the cross of 2,000 years ago was nothing less than capital punishment. It was a bloody, brutal weapon of torture and death. And it's important for us to point out that this crucifixion was not something that people embraced and thought it was beautiful. It didn't represent something meaningful to them. It, it represented loss and pain and horror. It wasn't, and Jesus' crucifixion wasn't some sort of accidental death or a mistake. It wasn't even martyrdom. It very clearly says in verse 17 that Jesus went out bearing his own cross. That's no accident. Jesus was not the victim of some unforeseen circumstances. That was by design. That was by choice. Scripture makes it clear that Jesus even predicted his own death. Many times he said, I'm going to die He said, no man takes my life from me, but I lay it down. Nobody took Jesus' life from him. He gave it voluntarily. Jesus Christ died not because he was forced to die, but because he came to die. Now, it was a willful choice because he loved us. He loved you. He loved you so much that he couldn't stand the idea of spending eternity without you. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time, in fact, not much at all, on the horrible agony of the cross. You've probably sat on studies of that, and and, uh, if you want to know more, you can certainly study that for yourself. You can find things online, and uh, you can check out our bookstore. You can go to our our church library. There's lots of information there. uh, But I do want to focus on a couple of things today that happened within those first a couple of hours. Jesus was on the cross about six hours from about 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. And in the first couple of hours, there were some things that happened. And I want to focus in on just two of the things that are mentioned in our passage today. And the first one uh, is seemingly unimportant and often overlooked item reported in the Gospel of John that made the religious leaders very angry at the crucifixion. Now, think about this. They were angry. They were glad that Jesus was being crucified. They, that's what they had wanted. They finally got their way. They finally got what they wanted to get Jesus uh, crucified. And so now Jesus is being crucified, and now something happens that just makes them livid. It was the inscription that was written, or Pilate had written, uh, and nailed to the cross. That inscription caused a great deal of anxiety Uh, within the ranks of the Sadducees and Pharisees. Why? Well, Jesus was crucified on a very important day. It was the Jewish Passover. Uh, He was crucified on this holy of holy days. It was a holy day in the holy city of Jerusalem where Jesus died. And it would have been packed with Jews uh, who who were there to celebrate Passover. And the crucifixion took place. They would, the, the Romans would crucify uh, the people that they crucified near the main arteries uh, in and out of the city. 
so that people that were walking into the city or leaving the city could see it. It was, it, it was kind of uh, uh, intentional. Um, one, of the way, one of the things that they wanted to do was to warn other people, don't commit crimes or this could happen to you, basically. And so it was in a very, very public place where everybody could see it. And so all of these Jewish families would be there in the Passover, and they would see this because it was by one of the main arteries. When a Jewish family arrived in Jerusalem for Passover, they would either purchase or they would bring with them a special little bronze tag, a little brass tag of some sort, and the name tag would have their family name written on it. And they would take that name tag and they would tie a rope or a thread or something to it and they would hang it around the neck of the lamb that they were going to sacrifice for their sins. It was was a tradition that had gone back for, for many, many years. And so when they selected the lamb that they were going to sacrifice, they would put their name on that lamb. As a, as a way of saying, this lamb represents our sin, and the lamb was sacrificed. Now, it's a fascinating topic to study, and uh, I, we're not going to spend a lot of time in it because, well, we could spend actually many, many lessons on this one topic. But I want us to take a look at that name tag in relation to Jesus and his crucifixion. We have to understand a little bit of the Jewish tradition in order to understand the whole picture, though. And so I want you to take a look at this passage of Scripture in John 19, verses 19 through 22, that Pilate writes this inscription, and it says, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Now, it was common custom uh, to put a sign on a cross uh, indicating what that person's crime was. Usually it was just a statement about their crime, not their name. And so in this time, Pilate actually puts his name. He has Jesus' name put on him. This is Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. Now, Pilate wrote an inscription, and he has this put over the head of Jesus. And the Bible says it was written in three different languages. It was written in Latin, which would have been the first language, uh, the the top. uh, It would have been in three rows. The first one would have been Latin, because that was the native tongue of the Romans. Then probably in Hebrew, because that was the, name, the, the language of, of the Jews. And then in Greek, which was the common language of the time, Aramaic, which was the common language of the time. And it would proclaim to all of these travelers coming in and out of Jerusalem that Rome had crucified uh, this person. And in this particular case, Pilate was saying, we crucified Jesus of Nazareth, who is the king of the Jews. Now, that just put the priests into a panic. It, it, they asked Pilate to change the sign and make it clear that it was Jesus' claim to be the king of the Jews, not that he was the king of the Jews. They say, say that he said he was the king of the Jews. Don't say that he was the king of the Jews. And it was, they were incensed about it. It drove them crazy. Why? Why was that such a big deal? Well, there was an interesting literary custom of the religious leaders in those days that helps us understand the verses that we just read. The Jewish scribes uh, would take letters of words um, in a phrase, and they would put them together to see if there was a hidden meaning in the lettering, in the wording, or in the arrangement of the words. It was a custom that dated back to the time of the Babylonian captivity. And they would write things in code, basically. I mean, there's still a lot of that, in, in, and you can find a lot of it in Jewish literature. And, for example, they might, the, there might be a, a, a passage, something written, but in that passage, if you take the first letter of every word or something, it spells out something else, some hidden code, some meaning. And this was pretty common. They did this in a lot of Jewish literature and a lot of poetry. And there are all kinds of acrostics, for example, in, in the Psalms. And you find little hidden words, little hidden meanings in that. This was just kind of a way of writing for them. So they would do that. When there was something that was written, they would look at that. Sometimes they would believe that it was a message from God. Sometimes they believed that it was just intentional, a code that was written to to pass along. And so they would have done that with this this wording also. And uh, um, in doing that, they found something that, that made them crazy. Uh, when we translate the inscription which Pilate wrote into the original Hebrew language, which is the language that these Jewish leaders would have been reading, uh, we can learn why they almost passed out and their blood pressure almost exploded. 
Uh, so I want you to take a look at this. When reading the Hebrew translation on the sign, the Latin read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. And it took up so many letters to do that on this signboard. And what they would do is the Latin would be the top one, and then everything else had to fall within the framework of however many words it took for the Latin. In other words, the Hebrew couldn't be longer than the Latin because that would have been, uh, that would have been saying that the Hebrew was bigger or more important, that sort of thing. So they, that was just one of the things that they did. It had to fit within the framework of the Latin writing. So... Um, uh, in the Hebrew, probably to get it uh, to fit on the board, according to Matthew, it said, Jesus, King of the Jews. So it dropped the Nazareth part, the reference to Nazareth. So the Latin says, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. The Hebrew said, uh, uh, this is basically uh, Jesus, uh, King of the Jews. When you translate it literally, when you take the, 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 the actual wording of the Hebrew, it has, and the words are up there on the screen. I'm not going to try to say it because I'll in, insult uh, our Jewish friends but, because I can't speak it. Uh, but that's what the Hebrew says there. Now, the custom, as I mentioned, was to take the first letter of each word and to put it together to see if it had a deeper meaning. And in the tra- Hebrew translation, that would be, the first letter of each word would be Y H V. H. Now, this may not mean a whole lot to you, but to the Jewish people, seeing those four letters together on, in that order was earth-shattering. You see, in the Old Testament, the letters YHVH or YHWH, as is also represented, uh, were code for the holy, unspeakable name of God. And we, in English, would add the vowels and pronounce it as Yahweh, or as Jehovah. But the Jews would not say that. They would not say the name of God. And so that's why they would use those letters. Even to this day, you'll find a lot of, of, uh, of our Jewish friends, when they write, they will write G-D. They won't say the word God because it's too holy. It's unspeakable. And so when the re- religious leaders read that inscription that said... God, Yahweh, uh, they came to Pilate demanding that he change the wording. And they wanted it to say, make it say that he said he was king of the Jews. And that way, if the sign said that, then it would, it would not use the name of God, uh, and it would not have been noticed on the cross. Now remember, they were crucifying for the sin of blasphemy. They said that he made himself equal with God. And by having that sign above Jesus, it basically said they were crucifying God. However, this is the one time that Pilate, in the whole trial, actually two trials that Pilate led, the whole time in both trials in which Pilate stood his ground against the Sadducees. His reply was, what I have written, I have written. And basically what he was saying was, I'm tired of dealing with you guys. I'm not bending any more to your demands. He said, I've had it. Enough with you people. God used Pilate to put his name on his sacrificial lamb for the entire world to see. Pilate's inscription became God's name tag. The Jews had been bringing these Passover lambs to the temple for years with the bronze name tag to atone for their sin. God hung his son on the highest hill in Jerusalem to tell all mankind, see my name, this is me. I am the ultimate sacrificial lamb. It's Passover, and while you're taking your lambs to the temple, my son's sinless blood will be flowing for the redemption of mankind so that you once again can have direct fellowship with me. That in and of itself brought such a horrible conclusion to this thing for the Sadducees. Because they didn't didn't want that. I mean, the very reason they were crucifying him was because they said he said he he was God. And now here for everybody to see is a sign of him hanging on the cross, and that he's God. And they understood the the implications of of the sacrifice of the Messiah. Some of them understood that. Some of them understood Old Testament teaching that said 
that, imp- that said that the Messiah would be sacrificed. And so just seeing that just completely devastated so many of them. They were so angry over that sort of thing. On behalf of Dan Hurst and the Open Class, we want to thank you for watching. We hope it was a